Roland Freisler, the 30th of October 1893 to the 3rd of February 1945, was a jurist and judge of Nazi Germany. He was state secretary of the Reich Ministry of Justice and president of the People's Court. He was also an attendee at the Wannsee Conference in 1942, which set in motion the Holocaust. Topic: Early life. Roland Freisler was born in Sella, Lower Saxony, on 30 October 1893. He was the son of Julius Freisler born 20 August 1862 in Klantendorf, Moravia, an engineer and teacher, and Charlotte Auguste Florentine Schwartfeger born 30 April 1863 in Sella, died 20 March 1932 in Kassel. He was baptized as a Protestant on 13 December 1893. He had a younger brother, Oswald. In 1914 he was at law school when the outbreak of war interrupted his studies. <inaudible> <inaudible> World War I Freisler saw active service during World War I. He enlisted as an officer cadet in 1914 with the Ober Elsassisches Infantry Regiment NR.167 in Kassel, and by 1915 he was a lieutenant. Whilst in the front line with the German Imperial Army's 22nd Division he was awarded the Iron Cross both second and first class for heroism in action. In October 1915 he was wounded in action on the Eastern Front and taken prisoner of war by Russian forces, whilst a prisoner Freisler learned to speak Russian, and developed an interest in Marxism after the Russian Revolution had commenced. The Bolshevik Provisional Authority which took over responsibility for Freisler's prisoner of war camp made use of him as a «commissar» as he was described by them in his repatriated prisoner of war paperwork in 1918 administratively organizing the camp's food supplies in 1917–1918. It is possible that after the Russian prisoner of war camps were emptying in 1918, with their internees being repatriated to Germany after the armistice between Russia and the Central Powers had been signed, Freisler for a brief period became attached in some way to the Red Guards, though this is not supported by any known documentary evidence. Another possibility is that after the Russian Revolution the description, Commissar, was merely an administrative title given by the Bolshevik authority for anyone employed in an administrative post in the prison camps without the political connotations that the title later acquired. However, in the early days of his National Socialist German Workers' Party career in the 1920s, Freisler was a part of the movement's left wing, and in the late 1930s he attended the Soviet Moscow trials to watch the proceedings. Freisler later rejected any insinuation that he had ever co-operated with the Nazi regime's ideological enemy, but his subsequent career as a political official in Germany was overshadowed by rumors about his time as a «commissar» with the «reds». <laughs> Post-war legal career He returned to Germany in 1919 to complete his law studies at the University of Jena, and qualified as a doctor of law in 1922. From 1924 he worked as a solicitor in Kassel. He was also elected a city councillor as a member of the Völkisch Sozialer Bloc, People's Social Bloc, an extreme nationalist splinter party. Freisler joined the National Socialist German Workers' Party in July 1925 as member number 9679, and gained authority immediately within the organization by using his legal training to defend members of it who were regularly facing prosecutions for acts of political violence. As the party transitioned from a fringe political beer hall and street fighting movement into a political one, Freisler was elected for it to the Prussian Landtag, and later he became a member of the Reichstag. In 1927 Karl Weinrich, a Nazi member of the Prussian Landtag along with Freisler, characterized his then reputation in the rapidly expanding Nazi movement in the late 1920s, rhetorically Freisler is equal to our best speakers, if not superior, particularly on the broad masses he has influence, but thinking people mostly reject him. Party comrade Freisler is only usable as a speaker though and is unsuitable for any position of authority because of his unreliability and moodiness. Topic. Career in Nazi Germany 
In February 1933, after the takeover of the German state by Adolf Hitler with the Enabling Act of 1933, Freisler was appointed as the director of the Prussian Ministry of Justice. He was Secretary of State in the Prussian Ministry of Justice in 1933–1934, and in the Reich Ministry of Justice from 1934 to 1942. Freisler's mastery of legal texts, mental agility, dramatic courtroom verbal dexterity and verbal force, in combination with his zealous conversion to National Socialist ideology, made him the most feared judge in Germany during the Third Reich, and the personification of Nazism in domestic law. However, despite his talents and loyalty, Adolf Hitler never appointed him to any post beyond the legal system. That might have been because he was a lone figure, lacking support within the senior echelons of the Nazi hierarchy, but he had also been politically compromised by his brother, Oswald Freisler, also a lawyer. Oswald had acted as a defense counsel against the regime's authority several times during the increasingly politically driven trials by which the Nazis sought to enforce their tyrannical control of German society, and he had the habit of wearing his Nazi party membership badge in court whilst doing so. Propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels reproached Oswald Freisler and reported his actions to Adolf Hitler, who, in response, ordered Freisler's expulsion from the party. Oswald Freisler committed suicide in 1939. In 1941, in a discussion at the Fuhrer headquarters about who to appoint to replace Franz Gertner, the Reich Justice Minister, who had died, Goebbels suggested Roland Freisler as an option. Hitler's reply, referring to Freisler's alleged red past, was that old Bolshevik? No. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Contribution to the Nazification of the law. Freisler was a committed National Socialist ideologist and used his legal skills to adapt its theories into practical lawmaking and judicature. He published a paper entitled Die Rassebiologische Aufgabe Bei der Neugestaltung des Jugends Trafrecht. The racial biological task involved in the reform of juvenile criminal law. Quote closing parenthesis dot. In this document he argued that racially foreign, racially degenerate, racially incurable or seriously defective juveniles should be sent to juvenile centers or correctional education centers and segregated from those who are German and racially valuable. He strongly advocated the creation of laws to punish Rassenschand, race defilement, the Nazi term for sexual relations between Aryans and inferior races, to be classed as racial treason. In 1933 he published a pamphlet calling for the legal prohibition of Mixed blood sexual intercourse, which met with expressions of public unease in the dying elements of the German free press and non-Nazi political classes and, at the time, lacked public authorization from the policy of the Nazi party, which had only just obtained dictatorial control of the state. It also led to a clash with his superior Franz Gertner, but Freisler's ideological views reflected things to come, as was shown by the enactment of the Nuremberg Laws within two years. In October 1939, Freisler introduced the concept of precocious juvenile criminal in the Juvenile Felons Decree. This provided the legal basis for imposing the death penalty and penitentiary terms on juveniles for the first time in German legal history. Between 1933 and 1945, the Reich's courts sentenced at least 72 German juveniles to death, among them 17 year old Helmuth Hubner, found guilty of high treason for distributing anti war leaflets in 1942. On the outbreak of World War II, Freisler issued a legal decree against national parasites, September 1939, introducing the term perpetrator type, which was used in combination with another national socialist ideological term, parasite. The adoption of racial biological terminology into law portrayed juvenile criminality as parasitical, implying the need for harsher sentences to remedy it. He justified the new concept with, in times of war, breaches of loyalty and baseness cannot find any leniency and must be met with the full force of the law. <laughs> 1C Conference On 20 January 1942 Freisler, representing the Reich Minister Franz Schlegelberger, attended the 1C conference of senior governmental officials in a villa on the southwestern outskirts of Berlin to provide expert legal advice for the planning of the destruction of European Jewry.
Topic: <laughs> Presidency of the People's Court. On 20 August 1942, Hitler promoted Otto Georg Thierack to Reich Justice Minister, replacing the retiring Schlegelberger, and named Freisler to succeed Thierack as President of the People's Court This court had jurisdiction over a broad array of political offenses, including black marketeering, work slowdowns and defeatism. These actions were viewed by Freisler as Wehrkraftsersetzung undermining defensive capability and were punished severely, with many death sentences. The People's Court under Freisler's domination almost always sided with the prosecuting authority, to the point that being brought before it was tantamount to a capital charge. Its separate administrative existence beyond the ordinary judicial system increased its notoriety, and despite its judicial trappings it rapidly turned into an executive execution arm and psychological domestic terror weapon of Nazi Germany's totalitarian regime, in the tradition of a revolutionary tribunal more than a court of law. Freisler chaired the first Senate of the People's Court wearing a blood-scarlet judicial robe, in a hearing chamber bedecked with scarlet swastika-draped banners and a large black sculpted bust of Adolf Hitler's head upon a high pedestal behind his chair, opening each hearing session with the Nazi salute from the bench. He acted as prosecutor, judge and jury all in one, and his own recorder as well, thereby controlling the record of the written grounds for the sentences that he passed. The number of death sentences rose sharply under Freisler's rule. Approximately 90% of all proceedings that came before him received sentences of death or life imprisonment, the sentences frequently having been determined before the trial. Between 1942 and 1945, more than 5,000 death sentences were decreed by him, 2,600 of these through the court's first Senate, which Freisler controlled. He was responsible in his three years on the court for as many death sentences as all other Senate sessions of the court combined in the court's existence between 1934 and 1945. Freisler became in this period notorious for berating in a personalized injudicial manner from the bench the steady stream of defendants passing before him on their way to their deaths, often shouting and occasionally yelling at them, particularly in cases of resistance to the authority of the Nazi state, in an enraged, glaringly clarion but dramatically controlled harsh voice using a mastery of the art of courtroom performance artifice. He was known to be interested in Andrei Vyshinsky, the chief prosecutor of the Soviet purge trials, and had attended those show trials to watch Vyshinsky's courtroom performances in a similar capacity in Moscow in 1938. <laughs> White Rose Show Trials In 1943, Freisler punished several members of the White Rose resistance group the Gestapo had brought before him by ordering their executions by beheading by the guillotine Fall bell. The 20th of July plot show trials In August 1944, some of the arrested perpetrators of the failed assassination of Adolf Hitler were taken before Freisler for punishment. The proceedings were filmed to be seen by the German public in cinema newsreels, portraying how Freisler ran his court, showing him alternating between cerebral questioning of the defendants, with clinical interrogations to prove their guilt of the charges, and verbally and psychologically toying with them to the point of enraged yelling of personal abuse at them from the bench. At one point he yelled at Field Marshal Erwin von Witzelben, who was trying to hold his trousers up after being given old oversized and beltless clothing. You dirty old man, why do you keep fiddling with your trousers? Nearly all were sentenced to death by hanging, the sentences being carried out within two hours of the verdicts. <laughs> death On the morning of 3 February 1945, Freisler was conducting a Saturday session of the People's Court when United States Army Air Forces bombers attacked Berlin, led by the B-17 of the highly decorated USAAF Lieutenant Colonel Robert Rosenthal. Government and Nazi Party buildings were hit, including the Reich Chancellery, the Gestapo headquarters, the Party Chancellery and the People's Court. Hearing the air raid sirens, Freisler hastily adjourned the court and ordered that the prisoners before him be taken to an air raid shelter, but stayed behind to gather files before leaving. A sudden direct hit on the court building at 11.08 caused a partial internal collapse, with Freisler being crushed by a masonry column and killed while still in the courtroom. 
Among the files was that of Fabian von Schlabrendorf, a 20 July plot member who was on trial that day and was facing execution. Freisler's body was found beneath the rubble still clutching the files he had stopped to retrieve. A differing account stated that Freisler was killed by a bomb fragment while trying to escape from his law court to the air raid shelter and bled to death on the pavement outside the People's Court at Bellevue Strasse 15 in Berlin. Fabian von Schlabrendorf was standing near Freisler when the latter met his end. Freisler's death saved Schlabrendorf, who after the war became a judge of the Constitutional Court of the Federal Republic of Germany Another version of Freisler's death states that he was killed by a British bomb that came through the ceiling of his courtroom as he was trying two women, who survived the explosion, a foreign correspondent reported. Apparently nobody regretted his death. Louise Jodel, then the wife of General Alfred Jodel, recounted more than 25 years later that she had been working at the Lutzow Hospital when Freisler's body was brought in, and that a worker commented, It is God's verdict. According to Mrs. Jodel, Not one person said a word in reply. Freisler's body was buried in the grave of his wife's family at the Waldfried ha Dahlem Cemetery in Berlin. His name is not recorded on the gravestone. Topic. Personal life Freisler married Marion Russiger on 24 March 1928. The marriage produced two sons, Harold and Roland. Topic. Cultural references Freisler appears in fictionalized form in the 1947 Hans Falada novel Every Man Dies Alone. In 1943 he tried and handed down death penalties to Otto and Elise Hampel, whose true story inspired Falada's novel. In the novel Fatherland, which takes place in an alternate 1964 in which Nazi Germany won World War II, Freisler is mentioned as having survived until winter 1954, when he is killed by a maniac with a knife on the steps of the Berlin People's Court. It is implied that his death was actually caused by the Gestapo, to ensure that the 1C conference and the Holocaust remained a secret. Freisler has been portrayed by screen actors at least six times, by Rainer Steffen in the 1984 German television film 1C Conference, by Roland Schaefer in the 1989 Anglo-French-German film Reunion, by Brian Cox in the British 1996 television film Witness Against Hitler, by Owen Thiel in the 2001 BBC, HBO film Conspiracy, by André Hennig in the 2005 film Sophie Scholl, The Final Days, and by Helmut Stoss in the 2008 film Valkyrie. See also Hanging Judge Kangaroo Court Hans Frank Harry Hafner Lieutenant Call Robert Rosenthal Carl Schmidt Gunther Vollmer Helmuth James Graf von Moltke Notes Topic. Bibliography Bruning, Stefan. Roland Freisler, Rechtsideologien im 3. Reich. Neuhegelianismus contra Hegel. Legal Ideologies in the Third Reich. Neohegelianism contra Hegel. Hamburg, Kovach 2002, ISBN 3-8300-0667-5. Buckheit, Gert. Richter in Rotor Robe. Freisler, President des Volksgerichtshofes. Judges in Red Robes. Freisler, President of the People's Court. München, 1968. Geerling, Wayne. Protecting the National Community from Juvenile Delinquency, Nazification of Juvenile Criminal Law in the Third Reich. A chapter from the author's dissertation Resistance as High Treason, Juvenile Resistance in the Third Reich, Melbourne University, 2001. Read it here. Knopp, Guido. Hitler's Hitmen, CHP, 4. The Hanging Judge. Stroud, UK, Sutton Publishing, 2002. Koch, H. W. In the Name of the Volk, Political Justice in Hitler's Germany London, 1989. Ortner, Helmut. Der Heinrichter. Roland Freisler, Mortar im Dienste Hitlers. 
The Executioner, Roland Freisler, Assassin in Hitler's Service, Wien, Z. Solnay 1993, ISBN 3 552 x External links The 20 July 1944 plot — Trials before the People's Court Volkskirchhoff, YouTube video in German — Shows Roland Freisler in action, https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch question mark v equals iq 6 hhwm Death of a Nazi judge New York Times, 17 December 1994. Retrieved 10 August 2008. Director Jochen Bauer, producer Bengt Mühlen 2009. The Top Secret Trial of the Third Reich, Documentary. First Run Features. Retrieved 18 March 2010. Actual footage of Freisler trying a resistance group. Newspaper clippings about Roland Freisler in the 20th Century Press Archives of the German National Library of Economics ZBW.